So it's been a while since I've done a color grading tutorial in Resolve, and when we talk about video production, it's easy to get caught up into expensive cameras and lenses, and I think it's easy to forget that color grading is a huge portion of putting your final image together. You know, it's very easy to make or break your shot depending on the information that you know about Resolve. So in this tutorial, I wanna talk about how to create amazing color grades inside of Resolve. Hey, what's going on internet? This is Josh Noel from Sunduck Film. Welcome to our channel. And if you're new here, be sure to hit that subscribe button. So I tend to do a couple of Resolve tutorials every single year, and that's because my techniques of color grading is always improving the more that I use this software. And I wanna be able to share those techniques with you guys uh, so you can implement it into your own work and choose what works best for your color grading process. So specifically, I'm gonna teach you the techniques that I use that help me get color grades done extremely fast, but also producing the best results for the shot. So without wasting more time, let's talk about how to create some awesome color grades. All right, so here we are in Resolve and we're in the color tab and this is the clip that we're gonna primarily color grade, but I'm gonna show you this technique and how we can create amazing color grades really quick. But before we go into how we color correct, and grade a shot let's break the shot down so there's different layers of color in this shot so we have the warmer skin and we have the more bluish teal background and you know i'm going to show you how we can easily separate the tonalities in the shot while also being able to apply proper exposure and color correction techniques to our shots so i'll go ahead and reset all nodes and grades here and we're back at our base and this was shot on the ursa mini pro at 4.6k b raw so the first thing we need to do is talk about basic color correction so first thing i like to do is always i go up to color go to nodes and i create three serial nodes remember that shortcut so i have three nodes here that are untouched so in my third node, the first thing I like to do by default is just come here to contrast and increase this. And depending on how much contrast your shot can take, you know, this will depend, but I like to do like 1.4 to 1.5 on my Ursa Mini Pro. And the reason why I do this is so I can kind of just get a visual range of what we're doing here. And also one thing we need to take a note of is the scopes. This is very important that we actually look at this and do this correctly. I'd like to go to the second node and I like to quickly color balance our shot. So how do we do this? We come here to the waveform monitor and there's this little icon right here. And what we'll do is uncheck the Y value. And you see that we have our color range right here. And what I wanna do is put all these colors together. And so we'll come over here to our color wheels. We'll click on number two here. And where's the color temperature, what we can do is just adjust this until all these colors become combined, just like this. And of course you can adjust the tint depending on your shot. When, but when everything kind of converges together, then you know your clip is more or less color balanced. So right now we have very nice, you know, color tones. However, the background is, you know, more neutral. It's not necessarily blue, nor is it that warm, but our skin is warm. And that's really what's important is color grading for skin. So when your shot is color balanced, things should theoretically look good. But I like to come here to my first node now, I kind of like work in this reverse order. But on our first node, um, what I like to do is kind of take the contrast even further. So in my eyes, this is still a flat shot. So we'll come here to lift and we can kind of bring this down by a little bit, increase the gain by a touch. You know, if you need to brighten up the skin tones, we'll kind of adjust the gamma as we see fit. I'll take a more in-depth look at this in a second so I can teach you some concepts, but you know, at least we want to be able to try to increase the contrast depending if we need to do that. And of course we can always go to our third node and continue to increase it there if we need to but if you really want to take this down to zero ire what we can do is create another serial node and i'll come here to the log window by clicking the third button here and where's the shadow i can just bring this down and this will kind of make the blacks even more black so you're crushing them even further and you're getting rid of that you know softer contrast in the black so you know that's a really quick technique that's up to you if you want to apply that so you know, overall, this could be our color correction. I'm going to kind of lower the contrast just by a little bit. It's a little bit too much for me. But this is generally a good color corrected shot, and we can begin our color grading. So just from general color correction perspective, we had this, and we made it look like this. So pretty good start. And before we move on, I want to give a quick shout out to Envato Elements. You know what I dislike as a content producer? Having to spend hundreds of dollars a month to purchase stock footage, music for my videos, After Effects templates, and graphic design templates for my business. With Envato Elements, I can save a ton of money for my business by spending only $16.50 a month where I can download unlimited music, After Effects templates, stock footage, and so much more for my business needs. If you want to learn how you can save countless time and money, be sure to check our links in the video description, which will take you over to Envato Elements. So if you want to be able to download as many assets and elements that you want for any software that you use, be sure to check out Envato Elements. That link will be in the description. 
So what I like to do for color grading isn't necessarily doing lift, gamma, gain, that sort of deal. I think that's just a bit, you know, ugly. So what I like to do is create a new serial node and then go up to color nodes and create a new layer node. All right. And what I like to do here is grab the qualifier tool right here. And you'll see we'll have it selected right here. And one thing I like to do is select the skin, right? And there's this little highlight wand here. And we see what skin we have selected. I'll come here to grab the uh, qualifier plus tool. And we'll select areas of the skin that were not initially selected. So, you know, try to get as much as that as you can. And, you know, it doesn't have to be 100% perfect because we can come here to blur radius and just increase this up to like 100. And, you know, we can increase the clip. Uh, and we can increase the clean white and clip black. So, you know, we have a nice selection here. And we'll come here to our scopes window and we'll change this to our vector scope. And this will give us an idea of where our skin's laying at. And this skin is definitely more in the red area. And usually sometimes you don't have to adjust this, but you know, maybe we want to just come here to our gamma and just shift it over just by a little bit and kind of shift over those skin tones a little bit. And overall, that won't affect the shot. But now that we have the skin selected, we can come here to our first node here the first layer node and we can shift the offset you know to be more of a blue tonality and you know that's going to make the clip a little bit more orange teal but it will affect other pixels but it doesn't affect our skin so what we can do is create another layer node hit alt l on my keyboard and i'll come here and grab the selection tool like maybe i can select you know the lips here and just refine that And we'll add some more and now her lips are not selected and then also we can create another one and we can grab say just her hair and now our blue color grade is not going to be in the black tonalities of the shot so now we kind of have more of this orange teal souped up look here um, and you know it works and before we move on I want to talk about a quick concept of skin tones just very important this is something that you should do in the color correction phase but since now that we have an actual look at our image, I think it's just a lot easier to look at it this way. And what we'll do is I'll quickly create a new node and we'll come here and I'll come here to our effects. And there, I have this plugin called False Color uh, from timeandpixels.com. It's free. It's a free plugin for DaVinci Resolve. Just search it up and you can install it. And it's also for Premiere and I also think After Effects and Final Cut Pro. Uh, but we'll go ahead and apply this to our node and this will tell us the exposure of the shot. And I usually just use this for skin. So we see, for example, the highlights of her skin are in the 70, 60 to 70 range, while the rest of it is, you know, the 50 to 60 range. And that's pretty good. So now, of course, it depends on the skin tones of your talents. So if you're working with someone with lighter skin, you know, a good range from 50 to 70, depending on your style, uh, is a good range for the highlights of their skin. And if you're working with someone with darker skin, it could be from like 30 to 40 to 50, depending on that range. I might make a video on color correcting skin for that, but... Just keep in mind that you know you want to be able to understand the exposure of your skin depending on who you're working with and to finish this off to keep it nice and simple i'll create a new serial node and i'll come here to our curves window and i'll come here to luma versus sat and i'll add a black point and a white point i'll bring the black point all the way down to make sure that we did not color grade the blacks a specific color so we can knock out any amateur mistakes and I'll just move this over by a little bit and come here to the white point and this will make the whites absolutely white. This way it'll cover up any mistakes that we've made really easily and always make sure that you check your waveform. This way we want to make sure that we don't have any information below zero or anything above uh, 100. So how do we quickly apply something like this to uh, another shot? Well, first you can right click it and click on grab still and it'll be added to our gallery window and we come here to another shot. So I have another shot right here and I can just right click our preset and click on apply grade. And if we need to make any specific changes, usually you're gonna have to touch them in the first three to four nodes here. So in our second node, we did our color correction so we can quickly make any adjustments here. Now for our color correction applied, you know, it's not necessarily where we need this to be. So always go back through your selections of grades here, you know, go up to the highlight one, see what's selected and just go through and reselect what you need to reselect to make sure that everything is where it needs to be. And you can always go through each of the nodes by adjusting, you know, the temperatures, uh, the re-exposures and whatnot as you see fit. But overall, if you control your exposures within the first few nodes, you should be good to go. And of course, always make sure to see what's being blown out and clipped. So you can go to our fourth node. We can come here to our log window, go to highlight, and we can just bring this down and nothing is being clipped in the shot. 
So it's a quick technique that we could apply to quickly duplicate this among our shots. And of course, you know, not everything's gonna be perfect. You're gonna have to go through and reselect different things, but you can build onto this layer node graph and reselect what you need to reselect. So this is my quick color grading technique that I'm currently implementing. I have a few other ones, but right now this is one of my favorite and quickest ways. It's not always 100% consistent, but you know, it's adjustable depending on what you need it for. So I hope you enjoyed this Resolve tutorial and are able to take away some of these concepts and apply it to your own work. If you did enjoy this video, be sure to hit the subscribe button because we post multiple post-production tutorials every single week right here on the channel. You can also hit me up on my social media networks. Those links are in the video description and always be creating.